Welcome to AP Podcast 15.2, Buffered Solutions, or as we usually will call them, Buffers. And this is where the chemistry starts to get a little confusing for some, and hopefully this will make sense to you. But what is a buffer exactly? All right, Because you're going to hear it a lot, it's going to drive you nuts, but this buffer thing, what is this? Well, it turns out you can have a solution. Imagine having a vat there, and we've got some liquid in there. And no matter what you dump in, whether it's H+, plus or OH, no matter what you dump, there's very little change in the pH. And uh, probably your favorite buffer of all time is your blood. And it's a darn good thing, because think about all the stuff we eat. And that stuff gets, uh, a lot of the stuff gets broken down, the nutrients gets uh, to our bloodstream, and it's a good thing our blood is a nice big buffer, because... Uh, that would cause us some problems. And actually, there are some medical conditions that uh, happen with uh, blood getting too acidic or basic. But anyways, the way it works is, notice this, it says a weak acid and it's salt. Now, we just talked about the common ion effect, and in fact, the common ion effect is how we get buffers. Uh, the other way is having a weak base and it's salt. And so imagine I've got, uh, again, we'll just use the example we used last time, HF. It's going to break down, right, into some H plus and F minus. And so what happens is if I, imagine again, this is in a big beaker, right? It's in a big beaker. So imagine what I have right here is I've got this buffered solution in my vat, and I'm going to dump in some OH, right? Well, what's that going to do? That's going to react with this acid, forming some of this fluoride, okay? And, of course, water, but we're not going to write that in there. What happens if I dump in some H+, plus? well, that's going to react with the fluoride, forming some HF. And so that's how a buffer works. As long as the amount of buffer is small compared to the concentrations of the, of the acid and a salt or the base and a salt, it's good. Okay? The nice thing about this is it's the same calculations as before. We are not doing any new math here. All right. Although I will admit, this gets a little tricky, um, but really the math is something you've done over and over and over. The key is just keeping everything straight. So essentially here's our buffer. We've got some ammonia and we've got some ammonium. Now imagine I'm going to add some H plus to the solution. Okay, What's that going to react? That's going to react with the NH3 to make some ammonium. Okay, now what happens if I add some OH? Well, the OH is going to react with the NH4 plus to make some water, of course, right? And some ammonia. So there you go. You can see from either standpoint, if we add H or OH, this reaction can handle it. We add some uh, OH, it's going to cause the equilibrium to go that way, or I guess you could say you could make reactants. If we add some H, it's going to cause it to shift that way, and we're going to make some products. So interesting little problem, all right? But let's try one where we actually have to do a little calculation. So here we've got a situation where we're going to calculate the pH of, of each solution so we can see exactly what a buffer does. Now, without spending the time to work this out, this is just a good old... <clears throat> equilibrium problem involving a base. So when we did that, or when I did this, I got a pH that equaled 9.52. Okay, But for a buffer, it's going to be a little different. So the first thing I need to do is write this out. I'm just going to pause the video real quick and write this. All right, so here we go. I'm going to put the 0 0.1 molar there. Big M, I just make it in the same thing here. And if we do the whole familiar uh, minus some x, gain some x, gain some x, and then we got 0 0.10 minus x, and you guys know the routine after this, all of this, plus x, and so on, and then x, okay? Then I set up my KB problem. KB equals, and remember the number is 1.1 times 10 to the minus 8th, 
and that's going to equal of course x times 0 0.1 plus x over 0 0.10 minus x okay and again with the beauty of these things with us with an, uh, an equilibrium that small where's my darn pen with an equilibrium that small we can just f ignore these x's and we get a value of x to equal basically that uh, that kb okay now remember when we're dealing with the kb x is my oh concentration right i know it gets a little mixed up here but we got to focus on that because we're going to want to find out uh, the pH and it's just you know and it really doesn't matter but I like to just find the OH or the H concentration anyways and then uh, go from there so I'm gonna race for a second so when I find the H plus concentration I get a pH for this buffered solution to equal 6.04 okay, which is a little on the acidic side right um, so if we want to look at the percent disassociation um, for the first one, for A, okay, I've got 3.3 .3 times 10 to the minus fifth, which was my H plus concentration, divided by 0.1 times 100, of course, equals 0.033%. Not very dissociated, but for B, it's even more so, because I've got 1.1 times 10 to the minus eighth, divided by 0 0.1 which gives me basically 1.1 times 10 to the minus fifth so you can see with a, a buffered solution the percent disassociation is quite different all right on to the next thing this is where it's going to get really interesting okay so when we have a buffer now uh, this is where it's going to, again, like I said, it's going to get a little hairy because we've got to really think about the chemistry. Okay, if we had a strong base, it will grab the protons from a, a weak acid, reducing uh, the acid concentration. So imagine I add some OH to some HF, right? And of course, we're going to make some uh, water and some fluoride ion. Okay, we're going to make some. So that's going to, as you can imagine, reduce this amount. Okay, if we add a strong acid uh, to the anion, um, so you can imagine adding some H plus to some F minus, and that will make some HF. Okay, but the thing we have to do is we have to make sure we take care of the stoichiometry first. Then once we have that, and we have our new amounts then we can do the equilibrium problem so you can see how this can be complete fun right because you start out with stoichiometry work all that out and then when you're done you're not really done because you now get to do the equilibrium problem which of course is a special kind of fun so let's go ahead and try one of these things and see if we can't figure out what in the world's going on so read that problem i'm going to write out the reaction so i can kind of set this thing up and then we'll go from there all right, so there's our reaction, and let's write in what we've got. You can see right here we have 0.5 molar acetic acid, 0.5 molar sodium acetate. So I'm going to put the 0.50 there. I'll put the 0.50 there. And I'm going to add uh, 0 0.01 molar uh, of the hydroxide. Now, as I mentioned before, we're going to take care of the stoichiometry first. So what's, going to, what's this OH going to do? Well, this OH is going to attack this acid, and it's going to make some acetate. So you can imagine that this 0 0.50 is going to lose uh, 0 0.01, and that's going to become 0 0.49. Hope I didn't lose anyone. Again, for every one mole of OH, we're going to react with one mole of H. So therefore, I'm going to lose that. Now, as the H gets consumed, we are forming the acetate ion. And so we're going to gain a 0 0.01. And now we're going to have 0 0.51. So there's our concentration. So we've taken care of the stoichiometry. And now it's just a matter of time uh, for taking care of uh, the equilibrium. So here we go. So Ka equals... And we've got X on top, 
0 0.51 plus x, uh, 0 0.49 minus x, and that, of course, uh, equals the K, oh, what's the Ka for acetic acid? I want to say it's, here, let me just find it real fast. Okay, 1.8 times 10 to the minus fifth, right? Okay, so again, through the magic of uh, chemistry, since this equilibrium constant is so small, we'll ignore those two things. And then what happens is I get an x value of 1.7 times 10 to the negative fifth. Okay, and then of course I throw that in my calculator and hit the log button and I get a pH equaling 4.76. Now, what's interesting is if we had this original solution without the, the base, we would have gotten a pH of 4.74. So you can see that even though we added a base to our solution, oops, added a base to our solution, it didn't change the pH. I mean, it changed the pH by 0.02. Right? And that's what a buffer does. So this buffer buffered this solution. All right, <clears throat> So there you go. Hopefully this made some sense. We, trust me, we're going to practice a lot on this. Because when you have to throw some stoichiometry in to acid-base equilibrium, it starts to get a little tricky. But uh, you're going to get good at it, I promise. So we'll see you next time. And uh, if you have any questions, of course, we'll talk about them in class.